Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to my channel, Ask Jimmy Smith. Today, I am excited to be doing a little bit more of a deep dive on the just amazing software that Keepa is, which I've talked about multiple times on this channel. You probably heard it in almost every video. Uh, you know, me mentioned Keepa at some point, especially whenever I'm talking about Amazon selling. I've done one video on Keepa.com uh, and utilizing the charts and how to read those charts that come up. I've also done a video on variations for how to read uh, Keepa charts for variations so you can buy the right variation, which you can find those on this channel. But today I'm gonna to be talking to you about another amazing feature within Keepa, which is the Keepa Data Product Finder. Now I get a little tongue tied sometimes saying that, so forgive me if I trip over my words, but it's the Keepa Data Product Finder. And I'm not going to go into a super deep dive on uh, really how to use it for specific situations. I just wanted to show this to you and show you the power with which this tool is and how much it can help you in finding different products and, and giving you different ways to source for new products as well. And the Keepa Data Product Finder is just uh, one of the amazing reasons that uh, every Amazon seller who does arbitrage or wholesale of any sort should have Keepa because it can help you find uh, different products based off of a set amount of parameters, which are pretty much unlimited. I mean, there's so many different parameters you can input into this software tool that will help you hone down a list that ultimately is targeted towards the uh, metrics and the statistics and the criteria with which you want to see. And you can do it based off brand, you can do it based off seller, you can do it based off of so many different things. You can exclude sellers. So Amazon sometimes has multiple different selling accounts, which you can you know look, look that up on online to see what uh, selling accounts Amazon uh, also sells on without it being amazon.com. Uh, but if you find those, you can add those in to exclude those results so that you aren't competing with Amazon as some sort of, uh, you know, a hidden Amazon seller. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is just going to be an overview video of the Keepa Data Product Finder for how to use it, some of the categories. Uh, it's not going to be, a, a, you know, a training for specific situations, but I do plan on doing more of those in the future. Please comment below uh, what else you'd like to see me do from a Keepa standpoint. If there's anything that I can help you with, any questions you have with Keepa.com, uh, either the extension or the .com website with the product finder and other tools. And please also comment below with any questions you have so that I can help answer those questions on this YouTube channel. Uh, and lastly, before we get into this, if you've got a red subscribe button below, that means you haven't subscribed yet. And so I'd really appreciate it if you do subscribe so that that way uh, it helps get the word out more and helps me to know that I'm doing a good job. But either way, thank you for being here. And let's go ahead and get into the Keepa Data Product Finder. Okay, as you can see, uh, I'm on Keepa.com right now. And uh, this is what it looks like if you just go to Keepa.com. You know, many people actually rarely go to this website and they just use the extension that pulls up on Amazon for the, uh, the Google Chrome extension. But if you're going to be getting into using this tool, you've got to go to Keepa.com and click on data. And then you want to click on product finder. Now, before I click on that, you can see there's a bunch of other options up here. There's so much that you can do within Keepa. You can track products and it will alert you whenever it gets to a certain price. Uh, you can do so much here. But anyway, let's go to the product finder first since that's the point in this video. Now within this product finder, essentially what you're doing is you're using Keepa's data and you are entering in uh, a bunch of different parameters that you'd like to see, and then it will pull back uh, results based off of those parameters. And so down here in this little blue box, it will pull up, once I start entering stuff in, it will pull up uh, the number of products that fall underneath that parameter or those set of parameters with which you put into this this screen. And you can see that it's a pretty long screen. You can really dive deep into specific products you'd like to see, even dimensions and weights and subscribe and save coupons and all kinds of stuff. Uh, it's pretty crazy the, the different things you can do. And I really encourage you just, if you've got a keepa.com subscription, play around with this. You know, it's not something where you should be finding a set amount of replens per hour. But once you get good at this, once you're playing around with this, you're using it, you start to see the power of it. You can actually really up the sourcing uh, ability that you have for finding specific products. You can search for specific brands within here that hit specific parameters so that you can sell it or find the products that meet those parameters. It's so powerful. And I just want to show you some basics of how this works. So uh, up here, if you care about sales rank, I don't. I actually typically will leave this blank. But if you wanted to see products that were within, let's just say, over the last 30-day average, uh, you want to say that they've stuck between 25,000 to 100 
thousand uh, of a sales rank, you can see over here that there's 9.3 million products that meet that criteria. Well, let's say uh, in addition to that, and again, I would, you know, I'd probably leave this blank because I care more about sales rank drops, but we also sell a bunch of products with no sales ranks. So you can actually check that box too, if you want to see ones with no sales rank, uh, which is pretty interesting what you can do with that. Um, but again, playing around with this and just seeing what happens, learning is what's going to give you the best results. Uh, I can go here and say, you know what? I don't want to see anything where Amazon's been uh, in stock. So I'm just going to click out of stock uh, for Amazon. Doesn't mean they've never been on it, but I clicked that. It went from 9 million to 8 million products uh, now on the or that meet those results or those criteria. And uh, I'm going to say, you know what? I want to see a buy box price. Uh, over the last 30 day average, that's over $25. And now we now we went from 8 million down to 2.6 million products. Um, and so we can continue to hone in on these parameters. And I'll show you just real quickly, but uh, we typically want to get it down to probably less than 500 products um, in this, because it's going to be difficult to really be motivated to go through more than 500 products that meet your parameters. But if for whatever reason you have virtual assistants or you have other people or you have the time and you want to sit down and go through a thousand, you can do that. It's just going to be quite the uh, activity. And personally, if you can get it under a hundred products, that makes it a little bit easier to go through the results. That's what I prefer. But again, uh, you can go up to 500 products probably without it being too big of a problem uh, if you've got a few hours at least to go through them. Uh, so we can keep scrolling. Now, I usually avoid all these used options and eBay options because I don't really care about that information. And now let's select a category. I'm going to go ahead and click in and let's do one that's uh, at least open for new sellers. There's 260,000 products now that fall within those parameters, uh, a minimum of $25 of a selling price. Uh, and something that uh, is between 25,000 and 100,000 sales rank and is in the home and kitchen category. Now, if I wanted to, I could say, you know what? I only want to see uh, brands, uh, maybe Pioneer Woman that pull up. And I don't know if that'll give us anything. Yeah, zero products that meet those criteria because there weren't any that pulled up. But we could do maybe Mainstays, right? Which is a Walmart brand. And if we click on that, because the price points and the other parameters, it's showing zero, which means I've been a little bit too strict on some of these parameters. So uh, that's just something to keep in mind. If you know of specific brands, you can put them in there and see what pulls back. Uh, you don't wanna make this so strict that you're only finding two or three. You wanna be pretty open with what uh, you know, you're able to find so that you've got more results. But uh, we can continue to keep going on. I wanna see uh, products with less than five sellers. So new offer count, I would put uh, instead of, I'd leave from blank and I would say two, I wanna see it with less, let's just do less than seven sellers but I want to have a minimum amount of sellers in there of three so that I know it's not a private label product. So now we went down to 6,000 products, right? Uh, we can keep going and add in different things. Uh, since I excluded Amazon, I'm not going to play around with the buy box seller. Um, and I'm not going to play around with some of this information. I'm going to click no variations because I want to see products that have, um, you know, just a single unit. Now, if you want to see variations, then cool, leave it open or just do only variations. But I'm going to click that and it brought it from 6,000 down to 1,000. Um, let's see what else there is. So sales rank drops. Now, since we've got, got it as an average of uh, you know, 25,000 to a 100,000 sales rank, you don't have to play with this because it's probably continuing to sell since that's the average amount. So I'm gonna leave that blank, but typically I would not have a sales rank average and I would do the sales rank drops instead, but we can keep going. Reviews, I wanna see that there's at least five reviews on this product. And so it goes from, it dropped it down 40 products. And then the last thing that I'll do is let's see if I can uh, do package weight. So I don't want it to be over, let's just say over two pounds and see what pulls up there. So there's zero products. Um, uh, let's try from, let's try 10, see what pulls up. Okay, so two products pulled up under that. Uh, whenever you do that, I accidentally clicked enter, so it pulled it back. I'm gonna click advanced filter. If you click the back button, you have to start over. So we can ignore this since clearly the uh, weight in grams is not working for me. And that's probably why I don't know how many grams are in pounds. Let me find that real quick. So two pounds is 907 grams. So that's where I made the mistake. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna put uh, it says only whole numbers are live. Let me just go with 907 because that's two pounds. So I brought it down to 384 products. That's a lot more reasonable. 
let's go ahead and just take a look at those results. Since it says weight in grams, I thought it was pounds. I didn't read that part, but uh, yeah, two pounds is 907 grams. That's pretty crazy. So find products is what you want to click. And you can see that there's a bunch of different things uh, that pull up. Now, um, because of that, they're all less than two pounds. They all fall within those parameters of being a decent sales rank average. Uh, Amazon is not currently on the listing, but it does not mean that they've never been on the listing. And so you can go through these products one by one. Uh, if you hover over this, you can see the, the generic, uh, you know, little um, keep a chart down in the bottom. And if you want to see it on the Amazon uh, web page, you can just click on that little Amazon link and it'll pull it up over here. Uh, now, obviously you've got to then find these products and uh, this most likely uh, is, yeah, I mean, it, it looks like it's available for random sellers to be on. So it is kind of odd that it's the exact same price for the most part. So I would be kind of cautious that this is some sort of a wholesale or um, private label product. But again, this is at least just bringing back some results for you. So if you want to see certain parameters that um, or certain products that fall within your parameters, and maybe you're just looking for things that uh, you've seen multiple times. Like maybe you're like, oh, I've seen this, this brand before, the Chef Pomodoro. If I click on the Amazon link, then maybe this is something that you can sell. You know, if you've seen it in your Walmart, you've seen it in other local stores that you want to see ultimately if you can sell it. So there's a lot of opportunity here. Again, I think there's uh, even more opportunity if I just go back to the product finder. Oh, before I do that, you can also configure the columns up here if you want to see different, different things. Uh, and if you want to see certain things in different orders, you can actually just move them around. So uh, it's pretty nice. You can choose that however you want. If I go back to the product finder, I think some of the most powerful stuff that you can do with this uh, is obviously using the brand section to pull back products that only fall within that brand. Um, also, some really powerful things you can do if you really think about the, um, the ability to see things with no sales rank, but that have reviews, uh, because then you'll, you know, most sellers aren't going to be looking at those things as much. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity there uh, within the Keep a Data Product Finder. And uh, I just recommend that you play around with it. You know, again, this was not a deep dive. I'm not showing you, hey, you do these exact parameters, you're going to find this specific, uh, you know, these specific listings for you to sell on. What I wanted to do is just show you the power of this and encourage you to go play around with it. See what comes, what you come back with. If you're brand new, focus on the traditional sourcing methods, right? I, I think that that's still the best way to get going. Uh, the stuff that I talk about in my book, Side Hustle to Full-Time Income, the stuff that I talk about in the course, the stuff I've talked about on this YouTube channel, the most basic methods of uh, replan sourcing still work incredibly well. But as you get really good with it and your business is thriving, start playing around with Keepa. You're already paying for it. You might as well play around with the amazing data set that it has for you. The power for you know using these things during the holiday season when there's a lot more merchant fulfilled opportunities. There's so much here that you can play around with. I just highly recommend that you do that. Now, if you like this video, uh, I would really appreciate it if you'd like the video, if you'd share it, if you'd subscribe to the channel, as I mentioned earlier, please comment below anything that you've got questions on, anything that you'd like a deeper dive on this Keepa product finder or Keepa in general, or just any other topics that you'd like me to cover. I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave that below. Thank you so much uh, for checking out this video. Uh, feel free to check out my website, askjimmysmith.com. And I uh, look forward to seeing you soon and seeing you on the next video. So I hope you have a great rest of your day and a blessed rest of your week.